What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to manually model trusses and truss framing inside your SketchUp models. I'm in this video, we're going to try to use smart modeling practices in order to model this and get these in here as quickly and easily as possible. If you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure to check out my free ebook, my top 10 time-saving tips for SketchUp at the Sketchup Essentials dot com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I don't want to get too far into the like exact depth or the exact design of the trusses themselves. So this is more of the modeling method that you would use for this. And then you would kind of modify it to fit whatever kind of truss you're creating. Cause there's a lot of different kinds of trusses and sometimes even getting an image of your truss might even be a little bit better and just kind of tracing over top of that. But for what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to model a truss in. And so I'm going to start off and I'm going to do what I usually do where I'm going to draw a flat face um, and we'll call it eight feet tall on the front of my framed building. I've already come in here and I've created my framing and if you want more information on how to do that, leave a comment below and uh, I can make a video on that as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough out the space of this truss. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this in half. So we only have to model half of it instead of uh, the other half and then we'll flip it and make it into one truss. And so what I'm going to start off with is I know the thickness of the bottom cord of the truss. So in this case, we're going to assume this truss is made of two by sixes. So that means that this is going to be a five and a half inch thick um, bottom cord right here. All right, and so once we've got this bottom piece roughed out, um, a lot of what we do next, I'm going to race out this extra edge right here. A lot of what we do next is going to depend on how you want this corner condition to look. So like, for example, if you want this top cord to run if you want it to run like kind of cutting this edge off or if you want this sitting right on the top, a lot of that's going to depend on how you want to do this. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move tool and copy mode and I'm going to copy this down um, about five and a half inches. So the thickness of what we want this cord to be. So um, just select this edge, tap the M key and then tap the control key to turn on copy mode. That'll allow me to create a copy of this line and I'm just gonna type in 5.5 and hit the enter key. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase out this edge right here just to keep this from getting all distorted and weird because what we're gonna do is we have this running from the very top point or the top post of where this is, well now we're going to use the rotate tool to rotate this down to get our angle. And so in this case, probably what I'm going to have, have this do is have this bottom point align with this point right here and we'll just kind of shave off the truss piece here. Depending on your truss, depending on how you want to do this, this could be different, but this will at least give you an idea of how you could do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key. And you can see how I have this whole thing selected. I'm just going to click on this point. To set a base point, I'm going to click on this point to start rotating this down. And then I'm going to click on this point so that we've aligned our bottom points from here down to here. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to continue this edge down. And uh, your inferencing should help you to do this. So if you move your mouse kind of in this direction, you can see how you get this purple line over here. And for now, I'm just going to extend this out until it hits this corner piece. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top where I'm actually going to draw along the, uh, I'm going to draw along the purple extension just somewhere past this. Then I'm just going to draw a line straight up so that this intersects. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase out some of this extra geometry in here so that this is just in here as a face. And again, this may work a little bit differently depending on how your trusses are going to look, if you're going to have overhangs or overlaps or anything like that. Um, for what we're doing here, I think this is going to work okay. So the other thing we need to do though is we need to continue this edge up on the top. And so I'm going to draw a guideline straight up and down. Then I'm just going to draw a line continuing this point right here. That way we We've kind of uh, we've continued this edge up so that it's straight up and down so that it comes to a point. And so the other thing we're going to do now is we're just going to move this over or we're going to create a copy of this using the move tool in copy mode. We're going to move this over in this case two and a quarter because if you remember the width of an entire um, two by six is going to be five and a half. So we want to do half of that on this side then half of it's going to go on the other side when we flip it. So we're just going to do 2.25 and we'll just erase out our extra again. 
So the other thing we can do when we come in here is we can draw in a couple extra support pieces. So like for example, I'm gonna draw a line from this corner to the midpoint right here. And then in a minute, we're gonna do the same thing going straight up and down. And we're just gonna use the move tool and copy mode and the perpendicular inferencing in order to do this. So you can see how if I select this edge and I activate the move tool, and then I tap the control key to turn copy mode. If I move my mouse around, I get several different inferences. I can get the green axis, I can get the red axis. Well, in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna hover our mouse over this line for a second, and then we wanna move until this gives us a perpendicular inference. So once we get a perpendicular inference, we're just gonna type in 2.25 and hit the enter key, and then we can take this same line and do a perpendicular inference the other way to a thickness of five and a half inches. And then you may have to come in here and kind of manually draw the rest of this edge in here. And then you can just erase out the extra in here as well. And so we're gonna do this one more time, drawing a line straight up and down here, and then just using the move tool in copy mode to create a copy two and a quarter this way, and then five and a half from that point. And again, we'll just erase out our extra. And we're good to go. And then we can just erase out these extra faces. Well, now what we want to do is we want to take this whole thing and we want to make a copy of it and flip it over here. Um, and notice we modeled half of this so that we didn't have to come in and model the other half as well. Now we're just going to use the move tool to create a copy. And then I use the scale tool to flip objects. You can also just right click on it and click uh, flip along and select one of the axes. I always pick the wrong one, so it's easier for me to use the scale tool. And uh, I'm just gonna move this back. And so once I move this back, I can erase out the center line and you can see how I have my truss modeled in here. So now that my truss is modeled in here, we can give it a little bit of thickness and then uh, start making some copies of the truss. So because this is a continuous face, all we have to do is activate the push-pull tool and we can just give this a thickness of um, probably in this case, I think it's going to be about an inch and a half, um, I think would be the thickness of something like this. Um, but you can set that to whatever you want. If these were going to be like... Uh, like double or something like that to make that thicker. You could model those that way as well. Well, then we're gonna triple click on the whole thing to select it. And we're gonna right click and we're gonna select the option for make component. And we're just gonna call this uh, roof truss. And so we'll talk about why we made that a component in just a second. But what we want to do is we want to create a series of copies in here. And so in this case, if you're modeling something like this, usually these trusses are going to get spaced at some set spacing, maybe like 24 inches on center or something like that. But we're going to find the center point of this. We're going to select it. We're going to activate the move tool. And then you're going to tap the control key to turn on um, copy mode. Once you've done that, we're gonna create a copy. We're gonna move our mouse this direction along the green axis. And we're gonna type in a distance of 24 inches. So that would be two feet. And uh, spacing may vary depending on the kind of building you're creating. But now that we've set that to two feet, I'm gonna type in times, which is the star key, and a number of copies, and then I'm gonna hit the enter key. So in this case, I'm gonna type in times 15 and hit the enter key. And you can see how that didn't give me enough copies. Now I'm gonna type in a higher value like times 20. And so if I do this at times 20, you can see how this gives me exactly the right number of copies in here. And they're all spaced at two feet on center. And then this last one, we're just gonna move it back a little bit. So this last one won't be quite on two feet on center, but that's okay. And so now what we have is we have our building with all of our roof trusses. And so the other thing you could do if you wanted to, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but you could come in here and you could start modeling out the different hardware pieces. So if you remember, there's a bunch of um, there's a bunch of metal hardware pieces that they nail onto these. So like right 
here they would nail on like a wood or a metal tab um, that holds the truss together. So if you wanted to get to that level of detail, you could model these. But what you'd want to do is you'd want to model it inside the component itself. So, and the reason you'd want to model it inside the component itself is because you can see how since these are all trusses, or since these are all copies of the same truss component, you can see how if I change one of them, the others change as well. And that's the power of modeling with components is now whenever I make a change in here um, to one of these, the others will change as well. So you don't have to remodel it 20 different times. So you could come in here and you could do that. You could apply a material. You could really do whatever you want, but this is just kind of a good overview of a workflow that'll work for you if you want to create repeating objects like these trusses in your models. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you used a method like this before? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.